Welcome to everybody. Thanks for joining us. Before we start with our Hamilton 2026 Commonwealth Games Community Forum, we'd like to acknowledge that the city of Hamilton is situated upon the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Hern Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. With our event happening virtually, we invite you to take a moment to consider and acknowledge the traditional territory on which you are currently living or working. I'm Teddy Katz, your host and moderator for day two of our Hamilton 2026 Commonwealth Games Community Forum. Yesterday, we shared an update on the overall vision of the games, the budget, and other key details. Today, we've set aside this time to look specifically at the social impact of the games, and in particular, the plan for affordable housing is one of the game's key legacies. Before I introduce our panelists, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in Hamilton, started my career as a journalist in the city with Brabant Newspapers, now Hamilton Community News. As I mentioned yesterday, I spent two decades as a national reporter at CBC. I was a sports journalist covering many of the top events around the globe, most of Olympics, Paralympics, Pan Am Games, and Commonwealth Games. In fact, I was a reporter at the Commonwealth Games the last time they were in Canada, in Victoria in 1994, and saw the legacy those games left behind. More recently, I helped lead the communications as part of the organizing committee for the Toronto 2015 Pan American and Parapan American Games, where Hamilton played an important role hosting soccer. At those Pan Am Games, one of the two buildings in our Athletes Village became affordable housing for 250 residents. Let me briefly tell you the story of one family who moved in there after the games, a single mother from Iraq with her three sons and their grandmother who's in a wheelchair. This mother says she escaped from a life of violence and oppression, and now in her new home, she says, and I quote, I feel like a human being. So this is one example of how these games really can change lives. And as I'm sure you'll see today, there's an impressive team behind Hamilton 2026, many volunteering a lot of time to help make this event a game changer for the people of Hamilton and surrounding areas. We have, we have a number of panelists who will talk about the social impact of the games. They wanna hear from you. In the last 30 or 40 minutes, the committee wants to hear your questions to help customize the plan even further so we can transform this region together. You can ask your questions directly to the panelists by clicking on the Q&A button. I'll try to read out as many questions as I can in the time we have. A summary of the responses will also be available on the hamilton2026.ca website. Our first panelist today was born in Uganda, but has spent most of her life making an impact in Hamilton. Nancy DiGregorio served the Hamilton Wentworth Catholic District School Board, where she started as a teacher before eventually becoming the principal and finally superintendent of education. Nancy has served the community of Hamilton in many different capacities over the years as a board director for various organizations, including the Hamilton Community Foundation, the YMCA, the Good Shepherd Centers, the Hamilton Police Board, among others. She's won numerous awards for her work. Nancy is working with Hamilton 2026 to curate a plan to deliver a legacy for the community to deliver economic, social, and educational benefits. Nancy will address the significance of these games on our communities and how they can be a catalyst to address vital concerns of the city. Nancy, over to you. Thank you, Teddy. Good afternoon to you all and thank you for taking the time to be with us. I am privileged and honored to be a member of the 2026 Hamilton Commonwealth Games Bid Committee. The Games are a tremendous opportunity to witness some of the world's best athletes compete at this level. It is wonderful that Hamilton will be able to share in the athletic accomplishments for some of the world's best athletes. A major factor why I am so enthusiastic to be part of this committee is the potential for Hamilton to receive sustainable, affordable housing. This initiative has the potential to benefit families for generations to come. Being able to live in a safe, 
sustainable dwelling preserves the dignity of a person and the ramifications on the physical and mental well-being of our fellow citizens is an initiative I am proud to be a part of. I dedicated my life to youth as an educator and my true calling was to assist those who were the marginalized in society, whether it was due to socioeconomic factors, minority communities, or those struggling with addiction and mental health. The common thread as to why so many students had challenges participating in the everyday nuances of their scholastics was their precarious housing situation, whether it was an unsafe dwelling, crowded, cramped accommodations, or a scenario where the home lacked the basic necessities of life living, of daily living, such as running water, reliable hydro, or a sound infrastructure, these youths were already at a huge disadvantage to their peers due to their lacking housing needs. Hamilton has a fantastic opportunity to change the lives of so many of their fellow citizens by, by, by being provided the tools to build and sustain affordable housing. When I was a principal, I noticed that there were students who, were, who would arrive at school almost as the doors would open for the day and they would remain this, in the school until the school closed. The reason so many chose to spend their days in the school building is because it was heated in the winter, air conditioned in the summer, it was clean, and most importantly, it was safe. Parents and seniors should never be put in a scenario where they have to choose between buying food for their family or purchasing life-saving medication due to the fact that most of their monthly income has been spent on an unaffordable dwelling. They should not have to be burdened with the lack of life essentials, especially the basic human right of a safe place to call home. Being able to provide families a home where they can safely raise their children is an initiative we, as Hamiltonians, should be proud to be part of. Safe, affordable housing is a social benchmark we should all strive to see our fellow citizens achieve. I am indeed humbled that I have the opportunity to play a very, very small part in a huge initiative such as this. And I hope, Hamiltonians, that you will join us to ensure that we are all coming together for affordable housing in Hamilton through Hamilton 2026. Thank you. And back to you, Ted. Thank you very much, Nancy. Nancy will be back to answer any questions you might have after our presentation. And don't forget to write in your questions in the Q&A box on your screen. I'm sure you'll be interested in hearing from our next speaker as well. Many people have been curious to learn more details about the plans for affordable housing with the games that Nancy was speaking of. Hamilton 2026 has been working closely on those plans with Inwell, a Hamilton-based charity that creates affordable housing communities. Graham Cubitt is the Director of Projects and Development at Inwell. Graham will speak to the plans for affordable housing and the focus on accessibility, sustainability, and human-centered design. Graham, take it away. Um, I just uh, appreciate the opportunity to share as part of this uh, presentation from our perspective as Indwell. Uh, Graham Cubitt's my name. I've been the Director of Projects of Development for a number of years with Indwell and have uh, worked with Indwell for about 16 years developing affordable housing. We're committed to um, creating affordability, uh, but also communities that feel inclusive to um, to many, many people. Um, I'm afraid that I think my screen is not working here. So 
Um, if uh, anybody can tell me if it's not, uh, that'd be great. Um, historically, many of our tenants have uh, experienced uh, life that has limited income. And uh, there's a little graphic that shows it. And if you can't, if you don't have enough income to actually spend for the basics of, uh, you know, housing, food, clothing, uh, you, you live a life in a constant state of emergency. Um, so when we can, you know, drive rents down, when we can make life affordable to our tenants, uh, we can all find a place of inclusion. Inclusion is important to us. Um, while we are a faith-based organization, we're open to everyone. And, uh, you know, regardless of where people have come from in life or where they find themselves or how they identify, uh, we want to engage uh, diverse communities and actively seek to identify and reduce barriers that prevent people from accessing and participating in our services. And that's all explained on our website. Some of our experience in Hamilton really is uh, very contemporary. We opened this building a couple weeks ago in the North End. It's 45 new apartments. Other programs being around a little bit longer, uh, like the Perkins Centre in East Hamilton. Uh, that's 46 apartments. Um, this is a project which we converted from an old nightclub and rooming house uh, as well in East Hamilton. Um, each of these programs, you know, takes a building, many that have been around in our community for some time, or, you know, are actually a redevelopment of an existing building or of, of a for, former property into a new building. Um, and the key theme, though, is that we want to take um, the needs of our community, we want to understand uh, what's missing in the spectrum of housing and supports, and we want to be able to say, how do we develop new affordable homes for people that will call, their, call this their home permanently? Um, in that respect, we know that the key things that, uh, that uh, help inform our, our thinking are uh, genuine felt needs of the community. An example would be here in Lakeshore, uh, Lakeshore Lofts in Mississauga, where we were able to develop a project of 68 apartments uh, in Lakeshore, Port Credit area of Mississauga, in close collaboration with the Compass Food Bank and Resource Center, with the neighborhood BIAs and, uh, and the uh, Ratepayers Associations, working with the region of Peel, you know, trying to assess what are the key needs that actually people are looking for when it comes to housing and affordability in that neighborhood. This is a common theme across all of our projects. Again, this one is Embassy Commons in London. So as an organization, you know, spend a lot of time listening, paying attention to what's needed, and then finding the resources and identifying the synergies between uh, the problems and the solutions to actually create new housing stock. It's really critical um, as we think about this opportunity with the Commonwealth Games to wrestle with, you know, why would we want to even be involved in the first place? And secondly, what might be the outcomes that we could achieve? We know that Indwell, um, you know, has a certain kind of capability and experience. Um, and so why would we, uh, you know, put ourselves in a position where we would, you know, join up with something that's, you know, a sporting event? Well, the key thing is, is that we know that, um, we know that none of us can do affordable housing alone. And none of us are uh, experienced as, the, as an organization or as a government or as a city uh, to solve all the problems by ourselves. This was a picture of uh, a community coming together uh, for the Royal Oak Dairy when we, when we bought that property, a former derelict brownfield. We had over 300 people come out to a community barbecue. United by curiosity, by need, by wanting to be a part of something uh, that was transformative in their neighborhood by many different reasons, but it represents the, the opportunity that we have when we come together as a community to solve problems that none of us can do on our own. You know, we know that sometimes that's the folks handing out checks, you know, uh, Cowan Foundation most recently donated towards one of our projects. Uh, you know, 100 Women Who Care, you know, service clubs from the grassroots level, the Arkells were going to host a, a rally here in Hamilton that got cancelled from the pandemic. You know, a portion of the proceeds from each ticket were going to go to Indwell in, in support of new affordable housing. But right through to, um, from, from the local grassroots level, right through to, you know, our senior levels of government, the key thing is if we each contribute something from our experience and our resources, we can change things together. One of the projects that we're working on most recently is uh, McQuesten Lofts in East Hamilton. Um, this is where, you know, part of this expression of doing things together is really uh, becoming 
uh, real for us as an organization. And we believe that this kind of experience and our commitment can translate across the Commonwealth Games uh, potential. Um, that's working closely with the Indigenous community uh, locally here and more broadly to find solutions that uh, empower Indigenous uh, residents of, of Hamilton and this region to actually find stable housing. We know that disproportionately homelessness uh, and, and other inst unstable housing does impact people who are Indigenous. And so as a community, how can we actually pull together um, for solutions? And this project's the partnership between in Indwell, De Dwa de Desne, the Aboriginal Health Centre, and Native Women's Centre. So it's this kind of uh, commitment which we're bringing to our current projects and which we're bringing to the Commonwealth Games uh, potential as well, to actually have meaningful grassroots, practical delivered uh, partnerships um, with the Indigenous community and much more broadly, uh, the communities in Hamilton who see themselves as needing and wanting to participate in affordable housing. It's not just about uh, big checks and big donations, it's about a community coming together so that you know we have uh, our, our federal partners, our provincial partners, our private sector partners, our constructors, our grassroots community, our volunteers, everybody coming together can actually create the solutions we need. The practical reality is, is that we believe that about 3,000 units of affordable housing can be built as a games legacy. 1,700 of those units would be clearly identified as delivered by the community housing sector. Another 400 of them or so would be affordable home ownership that people in Hamilton who are looking to buy their first home or enter the housing market would be able to purchase. And then probably about another 900 would be developed um, by citizens across Hamilton committed to affordable housing solutions. Working through all those details will take some time and will take a bit more, uh, you know, nuancing as the whole plan comes together. But from our experience uh, as Indwell and as a community of housing providers, we believe that it is actually possible. And so, you know, that's our commitment as part of this conversation is to root all solutions in expressed and felt needs of our community, the research that many of us as, as, as community participants have done, and in meeting the needs and objectives of both the Commonwealth Games athletes, visitors, et cetera, who come, and the long-term legacy of Hamilton citizens uh, as a whole. So Teddy, I'll pass it back to you and thanks for your, thanks very much. Uh, our next speaker is former MPP for Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough and Westdale, Ted McMeekin. Ted was former Minister of Community and Social Services, Municipal Affairs and Housing. He served as a cabinet minister in the government of Dalton McGinty and Kathleen Wynne. Ted has a special interest in issues related to poverty, social justice, environmental vigilance, advancing post-secondary education, children and adults with special needs, and social housing. Ted is going to speak about his involvement with the community benefits consultation process, and based on his experiences, will also share how these games can accelerate vital housing needs for this region. Over to you, Ted. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, Teddy. Uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and for everybody uh, joining in, your uh, engagement is really important. I, I need to say at the outset that uh, following Nancy and uh, Graham's a bit like trying to dance after Barishnikov, but uh, all that aside, I'll do my best. Uh, um, Mom used to say when uh, I was growing up that if you ever want to, if you ever get a chance to make a difference, take it. And that's actually how I came to be here today. Uh, my initial contact with the Commonwealth Games team uh, had to do with their solicitation of my advice as to how to best present the games to our community. I answered uh, directly um, that a statement of community benefits and the legacy potential of the games would be absolutely essential. Now, like many of you, I have a long history of concern about the need uh, for affordable housing. And I've learned over the years that, uh, as most, most leaders uh, eventually learn, is if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, you need to go together. And I think that's the strength of the uh, a legacy um, uh, portion of the Commonwealth uh, Games uh, proposal. It was after speaking to friends at Indwell, uh, who, in my opinion, uh, considered opinion as 
former provincial uh, minister of housing are probably the best providers of affordable and purpose-built housing in all of Ontario. After speaking with uh, with Indwell, I became convinced that the Commonwealth Games prevented, uh, presented a potential opportunity to make a monumental difference in our beloved city. Affordable housing is arguably our greatest city need. Uh, some 40% of all those living in poverty are children of limited means, but certainly unlimited potential. This coupled with code red realities, the link between housing, poverty, health and education, plus the fact that Indwell was very much on side, drew me to the idea of assisting with the resourcing and empowerment of a transformational housing effort. Today I'm engaged with a singular focus on defining and refining the community benefits of affordable housing. In support of this vision, it is our hope to develop, as Graham referenced, a collaborative process I believe working with Indwell, various community stakeholders and others, and based of course on a shared sense of purpose, namely to deliver affordable housing units, uh, it is our hope to align and mobilize community vision, expertise and skill to make affordable housing a critical component of the game's legacy. Being collaborative, comprehensive and authentic on a job this important is a big task and one that will require many participants. Now I'm thrilled uh, to say that uh, uh, my MP uh, and good friend Philomena Tassi has been very supportive in uh, our efforts, along with uh, MP David Sweet, uh, who has agreed to be part of the uh, consultative process and uh, a well-known and esteemed educator, Nancy D. Gregorio, who, who you heard from earlier. Uh, it's clear to me that if this opportunity is to come to fruition, we must find the way, as Graham repeatedly said, of working together. For it is together that we can seize the challenge, challenges and make the kind of difference we all want to see in our city. Martin Luther King used to say, there's never a wrong time to do the right thing. Now is that time. So my question to those who are uh, hooked up today and, uh, and care as, uh, as we do about, uh, about where the games is heading and how we can leave a housing legacy is this. What can you do and or offer by way of engagement, advice, wisdom sharing to move us forward to ensure 3,000 plus units of affordable housing becomes an important legacy of the 2026 Commonwealth Games. Thanks, and I look forward uh, through this session to hearing uh, uh, some of your ideas, perhaps reflected in the questions that are asked. Thanks, Teddy. Thanks to you, Ted. And once again, Ted will be back to answer your questions at the end of our presentations. Don't forget to write in your questions in the Q&A box on the screen. And I'll try to read out as many of those questions as possible in the last half hour or so, where we're hoping for a lot of interaction with you. I'm now delighted to be able to introduce our next speaker, Shelley Hill. Shelley is both a Mohawk and a member of the Turtle Clan, Six Nations of the Grand River. Shelley works with the city of Hamilton as the senior project manager, leading the implementation of Hamilton's first urban indigenous strategy. Shelley is going to address how the games can be a catalyst for achieving the goals of Hamilton's Indigenous strategy. Shelley, over to you. Thank you. Um, appreciate being here. Scano, Shelley Hill, Nick Gusso. Um, so like he was saying, I'm from Six Nations and I work uh, for the city of Hamilton as a senior project manager. So this, in 2015, the city of Hamilton committed to developing a strategy in collaboration with the indigenous community and partners that would work towards building mutually respectful relationships through key objectives. And those objectives are the T Truth and Reconciliations Commission's report, 
um, and now the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls, Indigenous Peoples Culture and Traditions, Promoting Awareness Through Education. So there are many drivers for the work that we do. And like many municipalities, we are focused on the work of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And one of the action items noted is um, it talks about um, specifically um, there is uh, 91 under the Truth and Reconciliation. And through our strategy, we also have it available or listed in our our action item, which is working with local Indigenous communities to host major sports events for Indigenous athletes. So one of the main objectives is being inclusive of the community's voice, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, which is critical for this journey. To understand what is happening within our community, we held events, sharing circles and surveys, because it's really important that we have you know, the community's voice and all the planning that we're, that we're doing. Our focus on relationship building continues and this ensures accountability and responsibility. Maintaining strong links with cultural values and beliefs, including the signif significance of elders and knowledge keepers, as they are integral in the work that we do binding our journey. So it's really important to, you know, have those engagements and um, bringing together, you know, that common ground. So the implementation plan is considered a living document, one that reflects bringing our minds together as one mind to improve and enhance relationships with the Indigenous peoples and is built on a nation to nation principles and values. So the vision of the implementation plan is to lay stones in moving the city towards reconciliation uh, between the Indigenous and non-Indigenous residents. So there's plenty to learn. Yahweh Miigwech, thank you. I just wanted to say when I think about the, this opportunity, it's about mobilizing the community brings unity and opportunities for the urban indigenous community and local nations. Um, it's setting a path for our youth, creating uh, recreational opportunities, developing healthy outlets, and learning the benefits of what we call um, our lacrosse medicine game. Especially during these hard times as we move towards recovering from the pandemic, this these opportunities will definitely build what we need to build to build a healthier community. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. Once again, Shelley will be back uh, with all of our other panelists to answer your questions at the end of all of our presentations. Um, our final speaker before we get to your questions is Kristen Worley. Now, I've known Kristen for years. She's one of the thought leaders around the world when it comes to diversity in sport and redesigning the role of multi-sport games to meet a community's vital needs. Kristen has been recognized for her work by the United Nations, the Commonwealth Games Federation, the International Olympic Committee, FIFA, among others. Kristen is a retired high-performance athlete in the sports of water skiing and cycling and is now working as a commercial designer. Now, Kristen is also a team member of Hamilton 2026 Bidco. And Kristen's gonna speak about how the vision for Hamilton 2026 aligns with the Commonwealth Sport Movement's transformation strategy, reimagining the role of sport to create overarching economic, social, and environmental legacies. Kristen, over to you. Teddy, thank you. And thank you for everyone joining us this afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here and having the opportunity um, to speak in, to this very special opportunity and regarding the transformation and refresh of the Commonwealth uh, sports uh, movement, um, which has happened over the last two years. And I've, I've had the opportunity um, working with the Commonwealth Games Federation and leadership around the world and looking at the ideas on how to realign 
the reasons why we all do sport, our interest in high performance sport, and how that affects community and the, and the communities that we all live in and how we can accelerate change um, and, and creating opportunities, taking from the field of play opportunities to from there to the built environment and how to um, build people's lives and, and, and creating opportunity to make sure that they are able to reach their true potential. The Commonwealth, the Commonwealth Games Federation in London has worked uh, exclusively the last couple of years in committing themselves on in transforming and realigning the, the idea and readdressing how, how and why we do sport. And it's been, a, it's been a wonderful journey and a unique opportunity regarding the Commonwealth specifically is that it en enables a, co a collaboration and relationship between governments across 71 nations and territories around the world that represent a third of the world's population, along with rep representing the, probably the majority of the world's most diverse um, communities and cultures around the world in one, in one succinct environment. So it's a wonderful opportunity that is very unique in terms of other multi-sport activities, in terms of the, the vision of the, of the Commonwealth itself, and what the opportunities are to take the values from our sporting environment and being able to then apply that to the lived environment in terms of the built environment um, to which we are all living. Um, so the sporting environment itself, in terms of the games, we are investing in a toolkit. The Commonwealth Sport is now a toolkit that helps to, and what we're trying to do is to take that and transform environments and cities around the globe. So what the Commonwealth sport has done, they have divided the, the world into six different regions. And what they've been able to do is being able to look at the different challenges that are uniquely um, challenging the various um, sectors of the, around the world due, due to the environment, the built environment, economic, economic impacts, and so on. And how that we are able to transcend the values and, and the learnings and the, and the skills in this kind of united relationship in terms of um, uh, of shared, sh shared uh, capacity from sh across nations uh, to be able to, able to transform and, and resolute um, lived environments around the globe. So for, in, from, a, from that standpoint, these, the, um, some of the things that we're looking at in terms of, this, in terms of Hamilton, which, is, which we're very excited about, is looking at the 2026 trajectory. Is, is, the, is the pivot point for Hamilton. Because learning from what we've taken back from, from 1930 where the games began, as, is now we're able then to be able to transform these values and being able to lead the world and pivot at this very unique moment and, and, and challenge within our world due to COVID-19. And being able to show and elevate the conversations and bringing these skill sets together. Hamilton is uniquely positioned and already fostering um, uh, evolution in terms of technology, um, environmental green technologies, renewable energy, steel reuse, uh, reuse decarbonation of concrete, and, and, and furthering stewardship around the world. So Hamilton's already doing this. And what we want to be able to do is to be able to accelerate that the, the skill sets and the opportunities and the innovation and that are are already occurring within the Hamilton and across the region um, to be able to share across the world and, and be able to share these skill sets and the unique opportunity that is a, being applied here is also looking at when we talk about infrastructure we're always we're talking also about the built environment but we're also talking about the ideas and some of the legacy strategies around um, healthcare and uniting healthcare and applying it to the built environment so we want to be able to lift the, the lift communities up and being able to apply specific uh, resources that typically would not come from um, a, a typical uh, process in a day-to-day in a day-to-day -day basis in terms of our government and how we apply financing towards a given a given task what we want to be able to do through the commonwealth sport movement and the tool set that's been given to us enables us to look at a much broader umbrella, looking at it from a, a whole, much more holistic approach, from a human-centered design approach, meaning from a bottom-up approach, where we're using collaboration, 
bringing in communities, bringing in resources and expertise and sharing our expertise and, and really focusing on the opportunity of what is necessity to, of the, the needs within the community um, that need to be addressed. And also looking at the games commodity is really an interesting um, aspect of all of this is that we want to be able to take the values of, of sport, the, the values from the field of play and enabling to apply that to the real world. So when we're talking about issues around accessibility, for instance, being able to apply technologies and innovation and helping people to elevate their day-to-day -day lives and how they move through space and how we apply that to the built environment. So when we're talking about this in a more holistic approach, we're talking about it in the sense of health and well-being, the health of community, the linkages and relationships between communities and regions from Hamilton and the, outs and the outskirts of the regions through Stony Creek, uh, Waterloo, um, Burlington and so on in that unique wonderful hub and really looking at making this a process about the people. And I think this is what the underlying conversation needs to be in the stewardship that we're talking about. And some of the things what we've been talking about and what Shelley was talking about earlier is also in regards to First Nations. The unique commonality through the Commonwealth sport movement is through sport, bringing people together. And the interesting part is as well, is the connection between Commonwealth nations and that foundation is of the indigenous communities from the Maori communities, um, from the Aboriginal communities in, Aust in Australia to the Samoy uh, indigenous communities in, in the South Pacific, six nations here in North America and connecting all the way to India in, in the indigenous um, Hindu communities um, are uniquely aligned. And the ideas that are transforming from these conversations has been, has been wonderful and over not just generations, but centuries and values that we are taking forward in, in kind of the fundamental design uh, in terms of public policy, but also in terms of the built environment, taking from these, the indigenous communities around the globe that share these, these tremendous values um, when it comes to um, looking at learning from the past, work at living within the, in the immediate, and then taking those lessons from, 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 from that and moving to the future as we are doing together. And I think this, this is the, the fundamental understanding and infrastructure and in every aspect that we need to do in terms of our values. And it's about collaboration, it's about community, it's about aligning our values together, it's about empowering our diversity and moving forward together and being utilizing the Commonwealth Sport Movement as it's been designed to, as a toolkit to help regeneration, to help to accelerate recovery and rec create um, uh, strategies that will move, from, move and change community for the next 10 to 15 to 20 years um, going forward and making Hamilton that leader, a leader in, in, within the region, leader within Canada and within the world. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen, and thanks to all of our other panelists as well.